How's it going YouTube? Make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I post new amazing content. To those who have already, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. In this video, I'm going to be showing you Granite City. I'm also going to show you another town right next to Granite City called Madison. Granite City and Madison are a part of the Metro East region of Illinois, which is the Illinois side of the St. Louis metro area. Highlighted on the map is the route that I generally take while filming this video. If you are unfamiliar with my videos, I do speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time. This video is sped up ever so slightly and you can always keep track of the real time that it takes me to drive in the lower left corner of the screen. On the other hand, if you are familiar with my videos, you've probably heard me complain about how the weather was when I was down here in my other Metro East videos. For this particular video, it took me three different attempts on three different days and hours of waiting each individual day for the misty and light rainy conditions to disappear. The weather forecast called for partly cloudy skies for the week that I had planned to film the cities in this region, but instead it ended up being what you see here. So I apologize for the water on the camera lens in parts of this video. I just went with it and hoped that it didn't turn out too bad. With some of the footage early in this video as an exception, this turned out pretty well when you consider how much time I spent waiting for conditions to improve. I probably missed out on filming eight other videos on this trip, mainly because of my attempts to film Granite City. Granite City is home to 28,000 residents and is the second largest city in the Metro East region. This is true despite the fact that Granite City has lost 12,000 residents from its 1970 peak population of 40,700. In its early days, Granite City grew from the railroads, the Mississippi River, and from being in close proximity to St. Louis, which used to be one of America's five biggest cities in terms of population. Granite City was also a sundown town, and for a while in the early 1900s, African Americans weren't allowed allowed in the city. Segregation had African Americans at the time settle in other nearby communities such as Venice and Brooklyn. This all reflects the demographics of Granite City that we see today, as 87% of the population is white. The median household income in Granite City is $48,000 per year. 28% of the residents are living in poverty, and a low 13% of adults 25 and older hold at least a bachelor's degree. The median value of owner-occupied housing units is $82,000. The economy has struggled in Granite City just like it has in many of the other Metro East cities that border the Mississippi River. Granite City is traditionally a blue-collar suburb that has lost several industrial-based jobs over the years, hence the 12,000 population loss since its 1970 peak.
The violent crime rate in Granite City is rather high at 766 for every 100,000 residents. While that's not a number that compares to the violent crime rate of East St. Louis or St. Louis itself, it's still a pretty high number. Maybe you should stop assaulting and robbing people, Granite City residents. Maybe if you can do that, investors will give you a boost in helping you bring back your downtown like you want to happen so badly. We'll visit downtown Granite City later in this video. Stay tuned for that as you don't want to miss it. If you were to start watching the video up ahead without seeing any of the rest, you probably would have thought that we were in Pittsburgh. Despite not having quite the economy that it once did in the 1950s and 60s, Granite City is still home to a couple of steel plants and other factories. I also remember the smell being quite bad on the stretch up ahead. Ugh. We are now in Madison, which looks an awful like downtown Granite City, which is still coming later in the video. Madison is home to 3,700 people, which is down from a 1970 peak population of 7,000. The median household income is $25,000 per year, and 30% of the residents are living in poverty. Only 4% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $41,000. It was tougher to find the crime rates for Madison since it's a smaller city, but the data that I did find suggests that the violent crime rate would be around 1,000 for every 100,000 residents and that the property crime rate would be around 3,000 for every 100,000 residents.
Venice today is home to 1,800 people, which is down from a 1950 peak population of 6,226. That means that Venice has lost more than 70% of its peak population, which is why you see vacant lots and abandoned buildings. Since Venice is a smaller city, it was tougher to find accurate crime rates for the community, much like it was for Madison. The data that I was able to find would suggest that the crime rates in Venice would be very similar to those of Madison. I'm guessing that this thoroughfare looked more like a main street back in the day. Today it's mostly vacant lots and abandoned buildings that line this stretch. And this is downtown Granite City. On the right is a giant U.S. steel facility. Downtown Granite City seems to be mostly vacant as it's dominated by boarded up buildings, vacant lots, and parking lots taking the place of where other buildings once stood. It's very sad looking, just like many of the other Metro East cities that line the Mississippi River. Well, 
hey, Granite City, at least you have your own cool looking downtown cinema slash theater. That's a positive.
This part of Granite City surrounding Wilson Park looks pretty neat, as it's full of older homes that remain occupied and I'm sure many of them have been remodeled to look even better on the inside. On the right is Granite City High School, home of the Warriors. The last championship won by any team at the school was in 2011 when the girls soccer team won the 3A Illinois State Championship. As I turn right here, I'm heading south. If I had turned left, you would have seen more shopping and retail as this is the busiest thoroughfare in Granite City. As I make my way over to the north side of St. Louis, the route called for me to travel the same path as I did in the beginning parts of this video.
This is the McKinley Bridge, which opened in 1910. In 2001, the bridge shut down as it was in need of repair. After six years of shutting down, the bridge was reopened in 2007, and this also carried the route of historic US 66. With that said, stay tuned for my next video, which will go through the north side of St. Louis, one of the most crime-ridden areas in the United States. If you enjoy my videos, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe, as doing all of those things helps these videos out with the YouTube algorithm. We'll see you next time. Peace.